The leadership strategies and tactics of football's master coaches is very much like the same of peak performance organizations. The strategies and tactics of football's master coaches, if properly implemented, will help organizations improve profitability and performance. The cultures are virtually the same. In my opinion, the greatest football coach of all time was a man by the name of Vince Lombardi. Why was he the greatest football coach of all time? Because he was an even greater leader than he was a football coach. Lombardi's grandparents immigrated into this country in the 1800s from Italy, mainly to escape the dire poverty of that country and do what other immigrants did, they searched for the American dream. Vince Lombardi's father was a very, very strong blue collar worker. Vince was the oldest of five children and he was starting to live the American dream. He was the first one in his family to go to college. He went to Fordham University and there he learned things that just were beyond his imagination. It's almost like Abraham Maslow that said, the unconscious incompetent that doesn't know what he doesn't know. And it was at Fordham University that Vince surely learned these things. After college, Vince didn't do too much. It was the midst of the Great Depression. And two years later, he got an assistant coaching position at a small high school over in Inglewood, New Jersey, St. Cecilia. And there his life changed. He did what every good leader should do. He immediately set a goal of becoming a head coach somewhere, either at the college or the professional level. It was not easy. 20 years later, Vince Lombardi was still looking for that head coaching position. His perseverance and everything uh, was such that probably most people would have given up in the meantime. And finally, he got a chance to go to this little place that nobody had ever heard of called Green Bay, Wisconsin. His wife thought Green Bay was in Minnesota. They moved to Green Bay. What was it like taking over the Green Bay Packers in 1959? The Packers by far were the laughing stock of the National Football League. They hadn't had a winning season in 11 years. In fact, over those 11 years, they had won 32 games and lost 97. His first year, Vince gave them a winning season, seven and five. This guy that nobody had ever heard of after 20 years as an assistant coach in a lot of different places was suddenly the National Football League's Coach of the Year. Why? Because of his leadership. He did that virtually with the same players that the previous coach had won only one game with. The next year, they made it to the NFL title game, got better, and lost to the Philadelphia Eagles 17-13 when they ended up with the ball at the nine yard line and couldn't get another play across. After that game was over, he told his players, we will never ever lose another playoff game as long as I'm head coach of the Green Bay Packers. And guess what happened? They never did. They won it the third year, they won it the fourth year. In his nine years, the Green Bay Packers would win five Big Ten titles, including the first two Super Bowls, if you wonder why the Super Bowl coach trophy is called the Vince Lombardi Trophy, it's because his Packers won the first two Super Bowls. Now, what allowed Lombardi to be so successful? First of all, he had a passion for what he wanted to do. He was extremely competent, a competent beyond descriptions. He never stopped learning. In our world today, we talk about continuous learning. That is not new. That goes clear back at least to 1959 with the Green Bay Packers at that time. Secondly, he staffed that team with competent people. Why were they ever competent? They were engaged and basically they loved Lombardi because basically they knew as a leader he could take them to a level of success they could never achieve on their own. They were just like any peak performance organization. They made the halftime adjustments and when they got knocked down, they got right back up. Now, we're in Baltimore here today the greatest football game ever played was between the old Baltimore Colts and the New York Giants at the end of the 1958 season. Why was it the greatest game ever played? Well, it did a lot to popularize football. It was the first overtime game ever played. And the Colts won that in overtime, 23 to 17, when the Heisman Trophy winner from Wisconsin, Alan Amici, would score the first ever touchdown in an overtime game. And those New York Giants, they weren't too bad either. The New York Giants in that era revolutionized leadership in football, and it's carried over to the business world. The New York Giant coach, a man by the name of Jim Lee Howe, did something that had never ever been done before. He put the offense in charge of one coach. He put the defense in charge of another coach. Today, we call those offensive and defensive coordinators, and he was pretty good at picking people. 
He picked Vince Lombardi to run his offense, and he picked a man by the name of Tom Landry to run his defense. If you're familiar with football, those two men were 20 years later, we become legendary. The Colts, they weren't too bad either. They had an excellent head coach by, and a man by the name of Weeb Eubank, and they had maybe the greatest quarterback of all time, old number 19, Johnny Unitas. Vince Lombardi's philosophy was, the quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence, regardless of their chosen profession. Vince Lombardi was the greatest football coach of all time because he was an even greater leader.